Yeah, what's going on, everyone? You know, today, you know, we joined us is um, a sister that I've, you know, seen on my page and never spoken to her at all, especially on our news side, you know, but this is the entertainment channel, the Philip Scott Show. We do different type of interviews over here. We'll do all the, the politic in here. If you, you want politics, if you want to say why she on here, I don't, look, it's my show. I have who the hell I want over here, okay? If you don't want to hear what we about to say, go over there. Okay, you've been warned. But for anybody that want to stay in here with this sister has to say, you know, welcome, welcome, welcome. So, you know, Marcia, we thank you for joining us on the show today. Appreciate you coming. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for having me. All right. So, you know, now I've seen, you know, you on our page and, you know, people that make comments, you know, I go check who they are. And then I, I think I've seen your page maybe a year or so ago, actually. And I clicked it and I say, oh, she, she's, well, she's smiling. And I saw, I saw the, I saw it. I said, oh, okay, she's into, I guess, a long time ago, they used to be called urban modeling. Is that the right term it used to be called? Yeah. Or your Vixen model. Okay. All right. So tell people like just a little bit about yourself and how you got into that. Cause I mean, they, they want to know. Um, a little bit about me is I am originally from New Jersey, but I'm currently residing in Atlanta, Georgia. I moved to Georgia to better pursue my modeling career and, you know, being in the entertainment industry. Um, I started modeling about maybe like five years ago. I had did a birthday shoot because it was my birthday coming up and I just wanted to take some really nice pictures. And I guess those pictures got into the hands of somebody else. And then, you know, I've been doing it ever since then. Um, I mainly do the urban modeling, but I'm very open to doing whatever God calls me to do. And I hate to just get to one box. So I just model. Like, if you want me to model shoes, my feet, my hands, it's whatever. I just love doing what I do. So, so far, what is the craziest thing someone asked you to model? Uh, probably like the feet things, like maybe put like a toe ring, probably just like the feet. Like, I'm like, okay, you want, they just want to take pictures of my feet or like my hands. And I'm just like, okay, like, you just want to take pictures of my feet, my hands? Like, okay, but it is what it is. <laughs> Okay, so that, let's let's start on the feet thing. Is it professional companies calling you to see, do this? See, the one thing that I hate is since I'm not signed with any, like I'm not signed with an agency, so I do a lot of freelance work. So social media has been my agent in a sense. So it's like when I get people who want, who want to take pictures of my feet and stuff like that, it's mainly the weirdos that be in your inbox. Like there's nobody, they're not professional. They're just like random men that want to take pictures of me. Like, and I'm like, okay, like you're kind of making me uncomfortable, but like, yeah, it's mainly those creeps. If I hate to say it like that, but it's true. Okay. So taking picture, like would they want you to take a picture of your feet and or like send it to like, them? Oh yeah. Take a picture of my, take a picture of my feet and then send it to them. So it's like, eh, it's like, that's the, I, I get like the creeps. It's like, because um, I hate the fact that um, as a model, and I'm a freelance model because I'm not signed to anybody major, I hate the fact that I may post a picture and it may be sexy or whatever you want to call it. And it's like, people think that since I'm not signed with anybody that I just do it for fun or, you know, they don't really take me serious. So that's why I feel like a lot of the weirdos and the creeps come in because they feel as though that they could probably ask me to take pictures of stuff that I shouldn't be doing, not I shouldn't be doing, of stuff that they probably think like, okay, she like, well, if she do it on for Facebook or Instagram, like she'll probably send it to me. Like I get a lot of those. So I get a lot of creeps in my inbox. So well, let me ask you a question. What 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 is if you can divulge on this? Because the people want to know what what is the highest amount of money so far someone asked you to take a picture of your feet for? I would say supposedly this guy was like, I'll offer you like four hundred dollars if um to send me a series of your feet. He was like, I want feet. He like, I want to take pictures of your um 
if I can send him pictures of my feet from the back, the front, the side, my toenails, and I'm just like, if you're gonna <laughs> sit, if you're gonna send it, I'll I'll take it. Like I'll take the pictures. But it's like once I, I gave him my cash app or my PayPal info, he went ghost. So I'm just like, okay. Like, yeah. So he want a freaking mug shot of your feet? Yeah, but you like like women and I can not just a mod, not just modeling, but women, I feel like I can speak for us all. We get a lot of weirdos in our inbox. A lot of them. And you be surprised on what they're asking us to do. But I'm just like, okay, you're lonely. <laughs> And, 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 you know, my wife told me about that too. So like, she was telling me that the majority of them that, that, that comes in is usually them, um, Arabians. Yeah. The, a lot of times the, they're not the Indians. And the, the Indians, the and Indians, 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 Arabians, and Nigerians. The, my three top people that be in my inbox. Yeah. Well, she said the same thing. My wife don't do any of that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Hey, beautiful. Can we chat? Where are you from? my beauty oh can you send me I'm, I'm like okay i just block it i just block it so so what, what what's up with all it i mean because that's a lot of simping to me personally like listen if a woman you know interested or whatever it's ways to, to do that even through social media right but are they like persistent like like just keep sending you messages um very persistent to the point where i have to block you because i could be mm -hmm. like well um, thank you for thinking about me, but I'm like, I'm not interested, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, then two minutes later, they'll keep sending me, they'll keep sending me messages. And then when I, when I don't respond, it's like, then I open my inbox and it's a penis picture. It's just, it's like, yeah. I'm like, whoa, they just straight, they straight this, uh, sexual assaulting you with your, uh, with, <laughs> on well, the internet. With the, yeah. With the penis picture. And I'm like, I'm still not interested. You know, well, listen, when I was a single man, that's nothing I never done, right? I never did that for a few reasons. Number one, that's stupid, right? And I think I think one time this woman, you know, like I was single, asked me to, you know, hey, can you send me a picture like that? I like, listen, I'll do one better for you. I will make sure it's available live in person. You ain't got to <laughs> have a picture. But if it ain't live in person, I'm not sitting up there sending you no picture. Like, look, I don't know what I may do later in life, and you got this hanging over my head. Hey, man, um, remember that picture you sent me about 20 years ago? Like, I need about 10 million. Like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> exactly. You know, so, okay, so these guys, you know, from, from you say, the Arab dudes, these Indian dudes, Nigerians. I don't know what's up with these Nigerians doing that mess. I, I don't know. Stay out of them sisters' inbox. Anyway, so let me ask you another question. You say people don't take you serious because you're not with an agency. What do an agency do for you? Is it kind of like a rocket label type of deal? Like, yeah, it's like it's somebody representing you in a sense. It's like it's like somebody is like investing in your brand. It's like you could say that it, I, I feel like working with an agency, I feel like people will take you more serious and you become more reputable. Like, well. You know, she signed to so and so, blah blah blah. It's like almost like a, a record label, and I feel like because one thing about me is I love music. I love music. I love music, and I've been studying and researching a lot of my favorite artists and stuff. And I feel like a lot of my favorite artists, you know, are not even signed to record labels or whatever. They're like independent. So I just feel as though that what if I'm talented, I'm talented. Why do I need somebody else to say so? Like if that makes sense, and but I feel like if I said that I was signed to like Wilhelmina models, I feel as though that maybe people be like, oh, she signed, like yeah, she's the real deal compared to if you see me on Facebook and it just says freelance model. If you want to book me for a shoot or event, you know you'll have my email address or you know something like that. So it's like, like that's what I mean by I feel like. If I was signed to somebody, maybe people would take me more serious and not just label me as a social media model. Well, hold on. I read talking about social media models. Now, I was reading that this one girl on Instagram, she was making like four hundred thousand dollars a month on Instagram, right? Yeah. And they showed her before picture. She took the money, got all the plastic surgery, you know. And I know that's a big thing in y'all industry now, plastic surgery. Um, and you know, she just, 
you know, making the money on Instagram, you know, so let's talk about Instagram because Instagram changed the game from the time of King yes, magazine yes, and all of that. Yes. And I feel as though, I feel as though that, um, I forgot who runs Instagram. I forgot who runs it, but I feel as though that he, you talking Mark Zuckerberg? Instagram. Yeah, I think he does. I think he, I think he runs Instagram. He owns it. Yeah. He thinks he's slick. What happened now is it's hard for models to really make a name for themselves on Instagram. Because I know a lot of people who are getting paid off of Instagram by mm -hmm. basically saying, like, hey, I wear secret deodorant, and then boom, secret pays them. But it's like now they change the rhythm of Instagram, where it's making it harder for people who have a smaller following to get noticed. It's like we get lost in the sauce at that means. So it's like we have to work twice as harder for companies and brands to reach out to us because it's like they changed the rhythm like they changed it completely where it's like before i was getting a lot of inquiries i was getting a lot of messages people reaching out to me and it's like now my traffic has been cut significantly like it's been cut so i'm just like and it's because now i really feel as though that they know it's power behind social media so I kind of feel like now you're trying to make it hard for us to get a check. The same yeah, thing they, with, do, they do change the algorithm. Yes, um, yes. You know, yes. they do change that. Yeah, they can manipulate that that thing. Yeah. And um, I know that just from being on YouTube. Like I notice on YouTube, every six months, they mess with the algorithm. I know it's that, you know. And because you you could you could notice how you, you kind of learn what the algorithm is doing, then they switch it on you, and then you're like, shoot. You know, yeah. you when, they, when you know when they change it based on like your traffic, you know. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And now, for instance, right, I, I believe that you have to have uh, a thousand subscribers on YouTube just for you to even start making money off the videos that you put out. So it's like they know it's power behind social media, and they and I feel like they're trying to stop you from getting a bag. They trying to stop you from making money, and I'm just like, wow. So it's like, it's become harder now because like I could ask somebody in a post and give or take, I'll have somebody reach out to me. But it's like, now if I do it, it's like, it's a 50, 80% chance that they may see it, they may not, if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. So, okay, so since Instagram done that, then let's talk about what has changed the game all over the place, OnlyFans. Oh my, oh my God. I'm so glad you had me on your show because OnlyFans, okay, for, okay, let me just say this, right? I model. And when I, I, I model, I can model a high fashion dress. I can model lingerie. I can model swimsuits. Sometimes I may do implied nudes, meaning that you may think I'm nude, but I'm not, blah, blah, blah. And one thing about social media is, my family, I have family on social media, and it's oh, like, yeah, I know, about yes, that. yes, yes. So it's like, even though I feel as though that I'm not doing anything that I would be ashamed of if I saw it 15, 20 years from now, they do. So I was like, hmm, I was like, I'm gonna start an OnlyFans, so I have a, a place where I can put my more sexy but tasteful content on a platform where people can view it i can get money and everybody's happy my family don't have to see it i don't have to hide it anymore and i'm getting paid but when i went on only fans i feel as though the girls are messing up the game because you got girls on there busting it wide open i'm talking about doing doing stuff that you're like oh my god and it, and it makes it hard for some for somebody like me that I'm not going to create that kind of content. And I feel as though that 90% of the girls on OnlyFans, they're creating that kind of content. So I feel as though that it's hard for me, even on that aspect, because I feel as though that who's going to pay to see me in a thong versus are you going to pay to see me in a thong or are you going to pay to see the girl busting it open, you know, busting it wide open? Who are you going to pay for? You gonna pay for her, or you gonna pay for me? And I'm pretty sure you heard this. I'm pretty sure you heard about OnlyFans. 
Because I, I, first, bro, it, it, it's my job to know about everything. But let me tell you something. I, I'm I'm about to like listen. You and you, Marlon. I'm I'm about just telling you how it is. When it comes to guys, guys were paid to watch a chick bust it wide open. Guys are paid for a woman in the thong. It's whatever guy it is. A lot of these guys are simp's that's coming there. If you had guys in your inbox talking about trying to take get a picture of your feet and you want a freaking mug shot of your feet and talking about possibly paying for it, then they will pay for the only thing, um, for only fans thing too. I just know how guys are. We have a big simp culture now, big simp mm-hmm. culture. So it don't matter how many females is on OnlyFans. That's like me with YouTube. It's so many people that do news, so many people that do entertainment. I can look and say, oh, this guy, you know, has this many million subscribers. This person got more than me on Instagram. I don't worry about them people. I live in my own little world and I'm challenging like myself every day to do what I can do. I don't look at other people, what they're doing. It could be a million people or whatever got something going on. All you need to worry about is your lane and what you got going on. And I worry about those females because let me tell you something else. Uh, Marsha is this. Sometime some people don't have what I call staying power or hard work ethic when it comes to this. And yeah, that girl, that girl may be busting that wide open, but is she doing that every day? What if you the type of person that you work so hard, you know how to post something daily. The daily people is the one that make the money. I'm telling you from experience. You, you know, you are right. You are right. And just to um, piggyback on what you just said, mm-hmm. I feel like in this business, you have to be consistent. Like, you can't be like, oh, I'm going to start a YouTube channel and post a video every three months. It like, like you, like you can't do, you, you can't do that. It's like, and then you wonder why, like, hmm, why does this person have 150,000 subscribers, but I only got 80? It's because this person is consistent. They're constantly developing and trying to nurture their craft. Versus, oh, I'm bored. I'll make a YouTube video today. And then I, you won't see that person on YouTube until like another four or five weeks later. Mm-hmm. So, like, I'm glad that you, I'm glad that you brought that up about the OnlyFans, about people not being consistent. Because, like, I've been piggybacking back and forth on, should I make an OnlyFans? Because I don't have an OnlyFans. And I've been reaching out to my, I've been reaching out to different people about, you know, should I make one, blah, blah, blah. And I like it's like what you said. I can only be true to myself. Right now, if you on there busting the open with with whoever you want, that's on you. I'm not judging you. Who am I to judge? I only know what I'm gonna do and what I'm gonna bring to the table. But it's like I hate the fact that now if you touch my, you got an OnlyFans page. It's like it's like oh my god, an OnlyFans page. But it's like it, it's it's weird, and especially during the pandemic that we're in. Only fans have only tripled in its popularity. Oh yeah, because, because you got people out here who have lost a source of income. So it's like if you can get on there and take pictures of your feet, your butt, your legs, whatever, and you can make an honest uh, living, then people are gonna do it. Then they're gonna do it. We don't like. We're gonna and, do it. And you so and you social distancing at the same time. Yeah, you know I'm, I'm making I mean, my you got, money you got... and I'm staying six feet. And, 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 and I've, you know, there's stories about, you know, women who's making a hundred thousand a month on OnlyFans. You know, got some has made a million dollars already. And I'm only thing I say about that, y'all better pay the IRS because they know about OnlyFans. So let y'all know it, that. It, exactly, exactly, exactly. And it's just like, um, like, oh my God, like this pandemic, um, has changed the game because this year when it came out to, modeling i had so many things lined up and then corona came and was like girl i got something else planned for you and i'm like yep like so it's just like now it's like everything now has almost become became virtual so it's like only fans have really taken off and then when you have celebrities being on only fans it's just taking to it just took it to a whole nother level well you know you know it was changed when beyonce mentioned it in that uh savage yeah. remix when uh, she mentioned it, you already know he went yes. to a different level at that point. Yeah, exactly. When Beyonce mentions OnlyFans, you're like, what? Beyonce? I, I love Beyonce, so yeah. 
I don't yeah, so that. you know that's a that's a Houston native, you know. Like mm-hmm. shout out to Beyonce and, and and everything. She she do a lot of things down here in Houston. Mm-hmm. So now, let me ask you a question about about the modeling worlds so outside the OnlyFans. Like I say, look, when it comes to family, I can tell you, my family see what I say sometimes. Say, hey, you made a video. I say, look, it is what it is. I say what I say. You got to be comfortable with what you're doing on here. Right. Mm-hmm. And and like I said, that content that you want to make, that's a little bit more, you know, too, too hot for Instagram or whatever. And if these guys go, if these simps going to pay for it, take their money. I'm a friend. I tell any woman that take these simps money and go buy, go buy you the biggest house you can buy. Take their money. OK, you know, what I'm I don't have no problem with a woman taking these dudes money. They need to get their money took. They're being stupid. OK, I have a question for you um, because modeling. um. Okay, well, women. Okay, this is what I have to talk to you about. Like mm-hmm. today's today's culture, and it and it has something to do with me wrapped up into modeling, right? Right. It's like now, women. We are now living in a times where we have been put on a platform. Well, we put ourselves on a platform that we can openly express our sexuality. That's right. the main reason why I started modeling because I believe in a woman's sexuality. I believe that a woman's body is powerful. And I believe that I have every right to feel sexy. If I want to show it, I feel like that's my right. And I want every woman to feel sexy. I want every woman to feel beautiful. I want you to own it, command it. That's the reason why I started modeling because like, even if you may be feeling down one day, I want you to see somebody like me that you can relate to wearing that sexy black lingerie. Or she's she's just doing it. She's doing it. And I want you to look at her and be like, dang, I could be just like that. That's the whole reason why I started it. But it's like now when you got people like Megan Thee Stallion, you know, even though like they model, whatever you want to call it. You got rappers like Suki Hana and Cardi B, like really putting it out there about taking these men's money. I kind of want to know, how do you feel about that? Like, do you feel as though it's a good example? Like, if they go... Um, is they giving it, take it, or do you feel as though that you know we should practice making our own money and or like you like you kind of understand what I'm trying to say or no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Well, you know, let, now you mentioned Cardi B. It's a few things that you mentioned. First of all, these women kind of like in the, these women are very surgically enhanced. Let's call it what it is. You know that. Um, mm-hmm. Second of all, I kind of think you, Megan Thee Stallion is real though. What do you think? No, no, no. You I can tell so? you. Megan the Stallion, listen, I know what I'm telling you. Megan the Stallion had a Brazilian butt lift. Yes, she has. She's had breast augmentation, at least that. It, you could see just how things sit on. You, you know what natural look like, and you know what. Yeah, because well, I'm not going to sit here like, I'm not 18 anymore, and my boobs do not sit up. I wish they did, but okay, they don't. Okay, so if you if you go get, for instance, uh, a, a, it happens to all women, right? That's natural, especially if you have children or whatever. Mm-hmm. If you get a breast lift and if you get a um, fat transfer, you know, whatever, right? You wanted to enhance or whatever you want to do. That, that's normal now. I mean, you live in Atlanta. You, you come on, you know that. Oh, um, my, oh, my, oh my God. I, I yeah, yeah. Let's talk about the plastic surgery aspect oh of my, my God. Yes. Let's oh talk my about God. That. Yes. Yes. It's like, okay, years ago, years ago when I used to, because I grew up watching Tyra Banks, Naomi, um, but like even Chanel Iman, um, like I would watch these women who I think, I don't know, time has changed. You see these natural, beautiful women that you feel as though that you could relate to, like the Aaliyahs, the Selenas, you know, just like, and it's just like now, especially me living here in Atlanta, you will be surprised on how many women have been surgically enhanced. And it's like, now it's like when I go to an audition or a casting, they're gonna pick the girl who has the gigantic ass, the tiny, tiny little waist, and the big old boobs. And it's just like I feel as though that's another thing that I kind of feel like in this industry I'm fighting against. I'm fighting against being real, and then fighting against the people who are fake. And like I said before, I don't have a problem with what you do to your body. It's your body, own it, do what you want to do. But it's just like now, I feel like we're living in a, in a world where now is plastic surgery is the new normal. And it's like, sometimes I even look in the mirror and I'm like, dang, like, okay, like, I don't look like her. Like, I don't even look remotely like her. So sometimes I, I, I do battle that. I'm human. 
I do battle that um in my mind, like, okay, I feel though I'm not good enough because I don't have the 20 inch waist or the Brazilian butt list and stuff like that. And it's just like in Atlanta, that's all you see. You can go to the grocery store and you're gonna see a woman who's been surgically enhanced. Not just one woman, but half the store has some kind of operation done to them. It's like, it's a new normal. I have seen people, I know for a fact, I have seen people pay for plaque surgery on layaway. I have seen people use their rent money, their tax money to go buy a butt implant. And I'm just like, whatever happened to like loving and embracing whatever you have, like, that's I, I don't know. It's crazy. That, well, that went out the window the moment plastic surgery became affordable. Look, when you're getting Brazilian butt lifts on average between five to what seven, seven, eight grand, somewhere around there, it is it, 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 it becomes more affordable. So when it became more affordable, and these women, especially let's say it started with the strippers or whatever, they say, Wait a minute, if I go get this Brazilian butt lift, you know, I used to make let's say I'm just throwing up a hundred dollars. Now I'm making a thousand dollars after I got this surgery a day or whatever. Well, it's then the other girls will be like, wait a minute, how much money are you making? He said, look, ever since I got this, so now they're going to do it. And of course we know the people have done it illegal means we've done, you know, the little, you no know, botch jobs and hotel rooms, you know, people have died from that crap, but now more and more people are actually going to plastic surgeons. I always tell people, if you're going to do it, go to someone that's board certified. If you're going to do it, Yes, uh, and it's yes, and it's so sad because over the summer, a model here in Atlanta, she died in the Dominican Republic getting her body done. And her last post on Facebook was, I can't wait to come back, snatch on you hoes. And I'm just like, Wow, like you really lost your so, life. So so and I've been hearing about that. They go to the Dominican Republic, Republic. to, to they, get plastic surgery. Why not just the doctors right there in Atlanta? Because I guess maybe because I like I'm thinking that maybe they said they're getting a deal in the Dominican Republic because some doctors won't like this. The girl that passed away over the summer, she had like five different procedures done in one day. Oh the no, average, that's why that, she died. Yeah, the average doctor is in a in the states is not gonna do that. They're not gonna do that. They may do two in a day and then tell you let your body heal, you know, let your body heal, and we'll come back at a later time and do the rest. But I think that's a lot of reason why people are going over there to do it. But I feel as though that a butt and bigger boobs should not cost you your life. Like, it's not worth it. Like, it's well, not worth it. The, uh, the reason why they dying is um, the longer you're underneath anesthesia, the uh, more dangerous it gets for you. Right. So if they was doing, let's say they get they, they uh, butt done, lipo done, whatever. OK, cool. Do that, but you can't go and say, "Well, I want a 360 lipo. I want a butt butt lift. I want a uh, tummy tuck. I want breast. I want all like all that takes time." And so you said five different procedures. That's why they died. Their body can handle all that. Exactly, exactly. And you like, and I feel like a doctor. I feel like a good doctor. It doesn't matter if you're in a third world country or not. A good doctor would tell you, like, "Hey." I'm not going to do this because like you should know better. Like I'm coming to you and I'm trusting you that you know what you're doing. So it's just like the, like the people, I feel like vanity, like beauty has become like life or death nowadays. And it's like, especially I'm pretty sure you've been to Atlanta before. And it's yeah, like I've been, every, I've been to Atlanta. Every girl basically you see is fake. You got the, the, um, the helicopter lashes, the, 40 inch weave it's just like oh my god what is real and i don't this, this is what i understand by them eyelashes right now i understand that women get it done right you know the 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 you know you can get yours threaded where it looks like mm -hmm. natural you know what i'm saying i don't like to see it looks so dumb and i don't know why some women think this look good you your eyelash is so freaking big. I'm like, what you about to do? Fly away with them things? Look, your eyelashes are so big that you can't even open your eyes. What's the purpose? And, and then and then, like I said, you I mean, then those those are the ones they actually putting the glue on. I'm like, go get your stuff threaded so it actually look right and it actually lasts. And and glue is and glue is gonna rip out your real eyelashes anyway. Everybody should know that. You're not supposed to use hair glue on your eyelashes. 
But let me let me back back door or something. You you know you asked me a question before we start talking about the plastic surgery part in the Dominican Republic. Like I said, let, let me wrap that up too. If you live in Atlanta, go to a plastic surgeon in Atlanta because we have certain standards in America that we're not going to violate. Because obviously those doctors in the Dominican Republic don't care about you know standards. Obviously it's cheap, and you want to go over there and talk about snatching on holes. Anyway, but you asked a question earlier about you know taking money. Listen. What Cardi B was doing, like drugging and robbing dudes, that kind of taking money, that's criminal. You know what I'm saying? All that dirty, grimy things that a lot of times you see strippers and all them kind of women, you know, do. No, but if it's something like legal, lawful, for instance, it's legal to have our OnlyFans, you go on there and you choose to pay that whatever fee you set up, you choose to pay that. You didn't steal it from nobody. So as long as you're not stealing or doing nothing illegally to, to take somebody's money, Get the, all the legal money you can. I tell anybody that. Pay your taxes though, but get all the legal money you can. So you shouldn't feel bad if you create that. If you feel at peace with doing that, you cool with that. You say, hey, I want to promote my photos that's too high for Instagram over here, or my videos, or whatever you got going on. I don't know. It's it's a person's prerogative. That's what they want to do. Okay, because that was that was like one of the things, especially you know, being in this industry. And I feel as though that you could probably relate to. It's just like now, it's like when you hear women talk, it's like, F that person, get that money, or, you know, get that money. Like, if you want to see this, get this money. It's just like, get this money, get this money, get this money, like, blah, 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 blah. And I'm just like, okay, yeah, I it, want it's... women to be powerful. I want us to know our worth, but it's like, I don't want us to sell ourselves short either for a couple of dollars. If that makes well, sense. Yeah, yeah, it, it definitely makes sense. You say you, with your um as, as you're talking, sound like your your microphone is hitting. Sometimes you're moving oh, your sorry. hands. Um, but no, it's trust me. I'm all about get getting the the to the bag. I'm all about that. Trust me. I, I believe hustle, hustle, hustle. Nobody's gonna give you anything. You don't gotta, you know, you ain't gotta steal from nobody. You ain't gotta be grimy and getting money. You don't have to betray nobody, backstab nobody, get money. Like I say, you should be able to get money. And just you know, still be a good moral character, right? Um, some people that talk like that, I know what you're talking about. They're willing to sell people out, backstab, uh, do dirt and grimy things, you know. Now, let me, let me ask you another thing. You talk about modeling. What what are some of the bad things that you have seen in, in modeling with some people like photographers Sex. or you know, uh, people in the music industry with Sex. girls or like do what? Uh, I just like the main thing in this industry is sex. Mm -hmm. Sex. Okay, and, let's, let's let's go. Let's go into that. What, what do you mean by that? Okay, willingly like, or not willingly? Like okay, like photographers. Like I experienced some of this in New Jersey in the Philadelphia area sometimes, but it has been taken to a whole other level since I moved to Atlanta. And mm -hmm. I'm speaking on Atlanta because Atlanta, as you know, is now considered Black Hollywood. So it's like you you could be at a gas station. And someone's gonna tell you that they know Ti, they know Two Chain, they know they know somebody in the industry, and you will have a girl who will flock to you because of supposedly somebody that you know. So a lot of the photographers I have shot with in Atlanta, they do have ties to celebrities. Whether you're inside that that team. Or you just happen to maybe know somebody that knows somebody. And I feel as though what they try to do, they try to manipulate um, us models into doing things that we maybe we don't really want to do, but you're promising us a ticket to fame. And I, that's like one of the downsides of modeling. is because people, if you have a dream, they sometimes prey on it. And they may try to manipulate you to do things that maybe you don't want to do, but you'll do it if you feel as though that it's going to get you to that next level. And that's the stuff that I have experienced and that's stuff that I have seen. I have had photographers, you know, try to sleep with me at photo shoots. I have had photographers where we may have agreed on a concept. We know, like, when I get to the studio, I know exactly what we're shooting or what we're supposed to be shooting. And then I may get there and they may be like, well, lose, can you lose the top? Or how about you just go completely nude and I, oh, I want you to pose like this or or something like that. Or what I tell them, like, hey, that's not what we talked about. They so-called try to tell you they'll blacklist you from the industry 
oh, I'll make it hard for you that no one want to work with you or you're never going to get anywhere if you don't do this because I know one girl, you know, she's busting it right open for so-and-so and she's been on TV, music videos, things of that nature. So, like, I would say sex is the biggest downside to, to modeling because I don't want to say it's all about the photographers either because a model can prey on a photographer and she she can see that the fact that, oh, you shot with big name people and she may be like, dang, you know, I'm willing to do this to you if you can get me close to that person or I'm willing to do this to you if you'll shoot me for free if you take my picture for free, you know, things of that nature. So I kind of feel like it's it's not just the photographers doing it, it's the models doing it too. Okay, so now, do any woman that you know of, do they be forced into doing some things? Like, I have, I have had a couple of models, you know, express that um, when they've been to a shoot, a photographer has may, may have touched them or I heard stories about a photographer actually, you know, taking it from a model, like actually forcing her to have intercourse at shoots. That's why when you meet a lot of freelance models, they'll be like, well, can I bring my boyfriend? Can I bring my sister? Can I bring my friend? And I say that because when you work with an agency, usually you have a team of people at a shoot when you're doing agency book shoots. You'll have the photographer, your stylist, your hair and makeup. So it's always more than just you and a photographer on set. But being a freelance model, sometimes a photographer may approach you and be like, hey, I think you have a, a, a certain look that I'm looking for. You know, can you already come hair and makeup ready? So a lot of times it's just you and that photographer on set. And that's what I have experienced a lot of times when I do my photo shoots or I go to an event. It's just usually me and that photographer. Sometimes the photographer may have, you know, a partner there, you know, maybe their spouse or something like that. But that's not always the case on my end. So, like, yeah, like, I have heard stories about models, you know, sleeping with the photographer in the hopes of, you know, getting them to the next level. I've had photographers that I know of, you know, forcefully, you know, put themselves on another model. And then when she threatened to say something, they're telling her, well, no one's going to believe you. It, it's just, that's like the downside to that. Because like once that happens to you, like you kind of feel as though that like, dang, like do people really believe in me or they just see me as somebody they can sleep with or take advantage of. Okay. So you say that they'll tell you I can blackball you, but how can you blackball somebody in the day of the age of the internet though? How? At one point in time, yes. But the time of the internet, how can you blackball somebody? The, like, that's what I want to know. Because, for instance, like, I'm not going to say any names, but a couple of weeks ago, a model had posted um, something on Instagram about a photographer, you know, sexually assaulting her. And she had the text messages and everything. And the photographer apologized to her, basically saying that he don't know what got into him. He don't know why he acted like that. He apologized. But he thinks it's best for them not to work together anymore, blah, blah, blah. And even though we all saw the messages that the messages between him and her, do you know that people still were saying that she was lying or that she's cutting out certain pieces of the conversation? So it's like, I feel though that if you have a big enough name and you have enough people who support and believe in you, I do feel as though it's still a possibility that you can still blackball people in this time of age, even though we have social media, we have screenshots, we have everything to back up our claims. Yeah, but because it is it's like this. You you have that, you know, it sounds like that old Harvey Weinstein's type exactly. of crap, right? That, that, you know, the, the Me Too, you know, situation. Um, I would think dudes would be afraid after that situation, uh, with all these dudes getting exposed. You know, and in, in, in worrying about okay, so in the t I, I just think it's crazy to tell a woman that okay, I just blackball you, you don't basically give in to me when you have Instagram, OnlyFans, TikTok, all these you know things like that, right? Like how how could they blackball you from TikTok? How could they blackball you from OnlyFans? How could they, and most of these women is making money over there 
they don't they they making way more money over there than they would the photographers can give them. Exactly, and that's a, like when you say that they're making more money over there. It's like that's another thing too. It's like photographers that I and that's another the downside to modeling because you asked what's the downside to modeling. I I feel as though when I had first mentioned earlier in that conversation, I feel as though that if I was an agency represented, I wouldn't have a problem getting paid. But when I present myself to photographers or like if people need a model for an event or whatever, I feel as though that they don't want to pay me. And that's another downside to modeling because since I'm not signed with anybody and I don't have anybody, you know, marketing me now, let me take that back. I do work with somebody. His name is Antoine Wright, and he's the owner of Apex Couture Magazine. And me and him, we do a lot of work together. Like he'll promote me on his magazine, he'll promote me on his website, things of that nature. But for the most part, I represent myself. So I'm paying for my own transportation. I'm paying for my own traveling. I pay for my wardrobe. I pay for my hair, my makeup, my nails, everything that is needed to make sure that I'm camera ready and I'm presenting you in my best form possible. So it's like when I tell a photographer like my rates or how much it costs to have me on set, they were like, uh, why would I want to pay you for it? Like I can go get on Instagram and get somebody else who wants to do it for free or she'll shoot for free. Like, oh, oh, like I get a lot of no's versus yes. So that's that, but, like, see, oh, but hold on, I'm sorry, I gotta interject. But you're dealing with a dusty photographer, okay? That's being dusty. And listen, anybody who's a professional go under saying, okay, you're gonna say, What's your rate? You will say your rate. If they can afford it, they say, Yeah, we can do that. If you're not, well, because because to me, listen, I, I don't like I, I would like to use another word, but I'm I'm gonna clean it up. It sounds like you're dealing with Negro business. I want to use the N-word. But I'm gonna say Negro, Negro business. You're not dealing with is that. Is that what a lot you dealing with? Yeah, I deal a lot. I deal with a lot of Negro businesses, and it's just like the same way. If I can't I ain't say black it. business is a difference. Black yeah. business is, is what I'm talking about being professional. And because listen, okay, if, if if I'm gonna hire you for something, then obviously, um, if you want to save money, well, okay, we'll book the, especially right now. The flights are cheap. You should do all the photo shoots you want now. Flights are cheap. You fly them person there, get them in a hotel, a decent hotel, not no Motel 6, but at least a Holiday Inn Express. Put them over there, get them to where they need to go, feed them, X, Y, Z. Plus, the, I mean, if you value people, you're going to pay them, right? Exactly, uh, exactly. But for the you say, oh, well, you don't want that much, then shoot, I'll get the girl from Israel. Go get her then. Because, exactly. see, you have to not work with those people. Those people are gonna have you in a situation. They're gonna put you in a photo shoot, and there's gonna be some shooting going on over there, or, or like you say, some old females. You want to go over there and listen? Please don't involve yourself with them kind of people. That's exactly that's exactly how I feel because it's like if I'm coming to you for a service, I'm not gonna insult you by saying, "Uh, I'll go somewhere else." Like I'm not paying that. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather have you say, "Well, thank you for your time." You know, maybe some somewhere down the line we could connect and do business, you know, that type of situation. But when you be like, oh, no, I'll just go get somebody down the street to do it for free. I feel like that's a slap in my face that you don't respect what I do. You know, saying and since you don't respect what I do, I don't want to work with you anyway. Because that, if we're doing business together, that's not how you handle business. That's not how you approach somebody. And you're coming to me for my service. I didn't reach out to you. You came to me. And it's like, okay, if you can't pay it, you can't pay it. So you don't have to be ignorant like that, if that makes sense. Oh no, it may it makes plenty of sense. I don't I don't deal with look, I have people that try to come to us, hey, can you guys do this in the third? And if I even get a hint of that, I'm out. Of course, thank God I do have somebody to talk for me on that. I don't talk with people like that, and it saves me a lot of time while I can continue to do, you know, what I gotta do. But I would not deal with them kind of people. I don't care what industry you in. I wouldn't deal with those kind of people. You deal with people that understand, hey, time is money. And exactly. like you said, it, it, it's, it's, you know, do they value like friends? Obviously, they wanted you for some reason. That's why they reached out. I mean, why you didn't go get the free 99 girl from the, from the rip, right? So I wouldn't feel, I wouldn't feel like bad or, or, or whatever about myself. I'd be like, man, I'm not dealing with them kind of people. You understand? Um, but one, but one thing I do want to ask too, you know, for definitely wrap up. You see, like a lot of models, 
what do you guys, because well, some women, you want to know this. What do you do for like a healthcare care regimen? Like, how do you stay fit? Like, were you always ready to get in front of the camera? What, what, what's your, what's your regimen? Um, okay. I know I, I want to tone up. I know that it's a lot of work that I want to do. Like, I know I need to work on my body. So I don't want to sit here and lie and be like, oh, I do this. I do that. A lot of, of where my physique comes from is just genetics. But I know for, per, I know personally, I try to take care of my skin. You know, I try to eat light before shoot. So just in case, if I have to shoot, my stomach is already flat, as flat as it can be. Um, that's what I try to do. I try to eat, I try to eat, you know, good. But sometimes it's hard because you know how it is when you're always on the go. You just grab whatever's there. But I'm working on that. I'm working on that. But I just try to do little things here and there to try to be well, always camera ready. Well, well, what are the little things? Because I mean, I've seen your pictures, and and, and it looks like it looks like some people they will see it. They'd be like, "Well, shoot, she must be working out." I'm not saying like you know you get ripped up six pack or something like that. Oh, but no, the average woman of, um, would I be do like a lot of running. I do a lot of running. I okay, so you are exercising. Yeah. Okay, but, how much running do you do a day? Um, I, I I try to like at least run around my block because I live in like a little housing development. So I try to mm -hmm. at least, you know, run around the block. And I also have a rabbit. Don't judge me. I have a rabbit. Oh, nothing so, wrong with that. Yeah. So when I take my rabbit outside, like I have to chase after him, you know, because I let him go outside sometimes and play. And when he go outside, he be out. So I try, I, I chase after him or I do a lot of walking too. And like I said, like, I try to eat, you know, my salads, or I try to eat light before shoot. And ladies, a lot of that come from you got to suck it in. You got to suck it in. Suck it in. Yeah, suck it in. That's why I, I do a lot of that. I do a lot of that. Like, so when you eat, like, are you vegan or are you just no, trying to I eat, eat meat? Like, I eat meat. Meat, okay. Like, I eat a lot of chicken. I eat a lot of chicken. I do eat meat. Okay. Are you vegan? Um, I would, I was put like this. I don't eat red meat. I don't eat pork. Uh, you can get me to eat pork. I don't drink, um, soda. Now I will. Now one thing I will eat is fish. I'm trying to get away from eating fish. I'm talking about like my black and, you know, like, but I like good fish, like red, red snapper. Um, you know, the, I mean the higher end fish, Chilean sea bass. That's a fish I yeah, like to go get. I don't put no catfish and tilapia. Yeah, because I heard tilapia is not even a real fish. No, that's a trash. No, don't eat that trash. Catfish is trash. Tilapia is trash. Anything like that is trash. But like this, when you go to the to the place in Atlanta and if the fish plate is at least $25 or more, you, you're dealing with good fish. Yeah, and you like you should not be able to go to any place and get a fish platter for $7.99. Yeah, no, <laughs> and you're right. <laughs> no, 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 no. That is not good fish you're getting. No, I love salmon. I love salmon. Sal salmon is good if if you can get wild caught salmon. You know that generic stuff that you can go to Walmart. No, no, no. You gonna get some pack. fish? Get wild caught. I mean, even if you go to the grocery store and buy it yourself, it would be cheaper. But always get wild caught with, with your fish. Yeah, I love salmon. Oh my god, I love salmon. It's, it's good, favorite. man. My wife throw down on this um this recipe. She made she bit she bought a big salmon. And, and I don't know what she do with that sauce she put up on there, but boy, I'm telling you, like the, the even my little girl, which she don't even like eating uh, fish like that, she had just tear that salmon up, but she put it in. The, I don't know what she do to it in the oven. Salmon but she, is so good. Once it you is. Know, and when you cook it right, and you know who's making it, salmon is so good. I can eat salmon all day. Yeah. So 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 let me ask, ask you another question. Um, they say so you in the modeling world, and there's a lot of women that got kids. Is that in that world? Is that is yeah, that we I have a we have a lot of mothers. We have a lot of mothers. Like me personally, I'm not a mom yet. I okay. just had my I just had my rabbit. Um, but I consider him my baby. But we have a lot of moms out here that are still, you know, doing the thing and stuff like that. So if any models out here who may be expecting or you have a little one, if this is your dream, if this is your passion, go for it. Like You'll hear some people say, well, once you have a kid, it's over for you, blah, blah, blah. No, it's not. Like, it's not over until you say it's over. So I tell any woman out here, whether you got four kids or you expecting your first child, if this is what you really want to do, not just modeling, but just anything in general. Don't give up. Like, keep pushing. Keep pushing. 
Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Your life not over. You just gotta, you just gotta figure out. Just you gotta tweak. Uh, you gotta tweak a little certain. You gotta, you gotta tweak, yeah, tweak a little bit, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, 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 Marsha, tell people like, like, how can they um get to you like your stuff? So, some people like, okay, now I, I want to see her, her, you know, pages and what she have. Tell people how to get there. Okay, um, you can find me on Facebook. My Facebook is Marcia Polite, M A R C I A. Last name P O I L um I T E or and you can find me on Instagram underscore Marcia underscore polite. And if you can't reach me on there, you can always find me at Apex Couture um magazine.com. Like I'm always on there, you know, updating. We're always working, trying to create new brands, new ideas. We're we're trying. We're trying out here. Even during the pandemic, we're trying to stay upbeat, positive. So we're we're trying. We're trying. Well, you know, and, and, and you know, f- f- listening to you, if I was in your shoes and the way I think, you know what I'm saying? I would say, you know what? Um, forget these agencies. I'm gonna create my own agency. I'm gonna find my own um talent. I'm gonna have me probably one or two photographers that I know that's good and 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 they can do good work. And I'm going to stick just using them and we're going to do this thing on our own um, through social media, through whatever else we're going to do. Right. Um, I just think that's just a lane for you, because, I mean, being signed to something is just not even the way it should be anymore. Like, why you would be dealing with them kind of people when you can make the money on your own? Exactly. And I'm so like, I'm so glad I had the opportunity to be on your show tonight. And, you know, I'm so glad because um, how we met was through you know twitter and like being on your show like you really gave me a boost of like you like you gave me that a drill it in that i needed again to be like you know what i can do this because it's like don't get me wrong like especially during a pandemic where life has completely did a 360 for everybody everybody's been affected by it so my spirit were a little bit down thinking like dang like Things are never going to take off now that the world has changed. But after having this interview tonight, like I'm ready to put pen to paper and I'm ready to make my own. I'm, I'm ready to make my mark on this world. Like I'm ready to do it all. Like I'm ready to take everything by storm. Like I, I, 2021, I'm ready for you. I'm ready for you. Like you're going to see my name everywhere. That's I believe in it. I believe in it. I can smell it. I can taste it. Yeah, any, anything de- definitely could could happen, and um, you know when you make when you make it big or, or whatever you're gonna do, um, uh, I I need my ten percent. I'm just joking. I'm missing. Oh, no, 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 no. I got I'm you. I'm joking I with got you. you. I got you. <laughs> no, I like no. My thing is, I, I like to try to to help out. You know, whatever we doing in the community, right? I just think my mind just turned different when I hear people talking. And, and I'm like, well, shoot, you know, if nobody goes sign, like if I was, uh, you know, into that, like nobody gonna sign me. F y'all, I create my own uh, agency and I find people myself. You know, it, it exactly, just you know. exactly like if I want to turn all those no's into yes, but it's gonna be on my terms. It's like I'm so glad that you said it because at first I was like, I gotta be signed, I gotta be signed. But it's like what you, it's something that, like the piggyback of what you said. How is somebody signing me determining my worth, my value, and what I could bring to the table? I don't need a piece of paper to say what I'm capable of doing. Like, really? Like, like you know what I'm saying? Like, okay. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I know exactly what you're saying. So, Marcia, thank you for you know coming on the show today. You know, I appreciate you definitely joining us. Um, having a good conversation and definitely put some information out there that some of us maybe need to hear and definitely some things I didn't know.